Hello, welcome or welcome back to the channel. Thanks for stopping by, I hope you're good and welcome to my April wrap up. What a month, I don't know. <laughs> Normally I would go through all my manga first and then my books but I'm stretching it a little differently this month because I read so much manga. Um, I don't have to go into a lot of detail for some of it because there's videos that I will link if you want to get more information but I thought it would be better to kind of structure it a little bit differently. So that's what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, so let's start with the books I read for Rum Bitch Rum. So my first prompt was a manga and graphic novel prompt and it was to read a book with a dark cover and for that I picked up Something is Killing the Children by James Tin and the Fourth. Fancy name. Uh, I picked this up or added this to my list on Becca's recommendation and I think it was Meg that bought it for me. Yes, uh, because the title screams gem for some reason. No idea what she's trying to imply. <laughs> I'd seen Becca talking about this a lot, added it to my list, got it from Meg. Decided to pick it up for this prompt um, because when I went to Becca's for her birthday, she was telling me more about it and I got her some copies and she was like telling me about it and we were talking about another series that I've read by this author, um, which I absolutely loved. So I picked it up, read it, brilliant. So good. Oh my God, it's so good. The artwork is really cool. I really like the style. Um, I'm so invested in the mystery already. I'm just trying to find you a bit of artwork that has no spoilers. There's no major spoilers here, but this is kind of like our character that we're following, whose name is Erica Slaughter. Amazing name. And basically, these kids start to go missing, and she gets sent there. Oh, she's there. Look, she's so cool. Um, and yeah, there's a there's a big mystery going on, and it's maybe not human, natural. And yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. Can't wait to get my hands on volume two. Then the second prompt was a dark book prompt and it was to read a book with a person on the cover. And for that, I decided to go for Tokyo Revengers volumes seven to eight. I am absolutely obsessed with this series. And this was a great volume, uh, well, two volumes. So good, so much happened. There was like a big fight scene, um, which are always so well done in this. And the ending of volume eight, <laughs> was like cruel. I have so many questions. Luckily, actually I'm filming this on Sunday and I plan on picking up the next bind up today. So I don't have much longer to wait, but I had to wait for it a while, which was cruel. Cruel. I think I've told you about this before. Well, I know I've told you about this before, but we're following, we're still following Takamichi as he's trying to like change the past so that his friends from the gang and his girlfriend from high school, um, are not in the position they are now, which for the girlfriend is dead. He doesn't want the girlfriend to be dead anymore. I explain plots so well. I don't know why people keep picking up manga on my recommendations because I do not explain anything, anything at all. I love this series because the characters are like so intricate and there's like so many different sides to them. My favourite character, well I can't actually choose, I've got two favourite characters but one of them is called Mitsuya and he's like in a gang and then something got revealed, like a softer side of him got revealed and I was like I love him even more now and it's just a good time, it's so good. I mean it, it will like emotionally hurt you but apparently that's what I think is a good time. So we're learning lots about me today, <laughs> although I think we already knew that. Next, I had a manga and graphic novel prompt again, and this time it was to read a book with brown on the cover. Shocking absolutely no one. I picked up Attack on Titan. Um, there's always seems to be brown on the cover. I think it's because a lot of their uniforms have brown in them, so it tends to be there. So this is uh, volumes 22, 23, and 24. This got me to where I needed to so that I could start season three of the anime. I have four episodes left. I watched an episode last night that I knew was coming. And I still cried. Like a baby. A hungry, angry baby. I am so utterly obsessed with Attack on Titan. And I'm absolutely fine about it. And I can't tell you anything apart from the fact that what's left of humanity is living in a walled city and they're being attacked by titans that appeared 100 years ago. And with my Attack on Titan mug, I'm telling you to read it. You will not be sorry. Read it or watch it either. Either or. Just get yourself some Attack on Titan in your life. If, I, if it wasn't clear, all of these have been five stars because I forgot to give you any ratings. I don't know how to wrap up. Then we had a sci-fi fantasy prompt, which was to read a book with POC rep. And I put Attack on Titan, No Regrets, Volume 1. Uh, and then I was like, well, it's only two volumes. I might as well just read them both. So I did. 
and they were both size stars. It was great. I think this was a an OVA first, so like a one shot anime episode, um, and it tells you the kind of story of Levi and Commander Irvin and how they met and what life was like pre series for them, and it was so good. I'd seen the anime episode because I watched it with my friend Emma and I think that did come first and then this was written off the back of it. It's really well done and I loved getting that kind of backstory for them. Levi's backstory is so good. It is explored a little bit in the anime itself but I really think that having the No Regrets episode, watching the No Regrets episode or reading the manga is so important. You get a better look at his character, you get a better understanding of how him and Irvin kind of work together and their history and it was just so good i love them so much i love everyone in the show so much look at him he's so cool i love him and finally for run bitch run i had a sci-fi fantasy prompt which was to read a book with a weapon on the cover and i picked up chainsaw man volume one i started it finally it was so good so good bit weird love that it's about a guy who uh somehow becomes like part devil part human um and he is the chainsaw devil and then he joins an organisation that hunt down devils. And it was brilliant. It was really, really good. It was funny in places. It was heartbreaking in places. I really like the main character. I really like the characters that are kind of coming into it as well. Because I've continued it a little bit. And yeah. I can't wait to watch the anime now. Somebody did say, like, it gets really weird. Um, hopefully you can stick to it. And I was like, I want to watch it more now. I want to read it more now. <laughs> it's weird. Sign me up. Sign me up. Another five stars. So it's five stars across the board for Run Bitch Run, which is pretty damn good. And I completed all my prompts, so well done me. So next up, we're going to go through all of the extra manga that I read. This is going to be fairly quick fire. I've got some that I need to tell you a bit about, and then some I'm just going to link my reading vlog, because I read like 15 volumes for a reading vlog. It was a great time. It was like one of the best weekends ever. <laughs> it was so good. But before I get into that, on my Animanga Instagram, I have... Uh, a wheel that I do if I want to read like additional manga I let the wheel decide because I don't know if you know this I've got quite a lot of series on the go and I'm a very indecisive person so <laughs> I've been letting the wheel tell me what the hell I should read and um, what the hell I should watch because I also have one for anime sometimes I have one to just decide to tell me what to do because I don't know whether I'm supposed to be reading watching anime I don't know so I've basically been letting these wheels control my downtime or control my reading and that and it's so far done me good done me good so yeah i've i've been doing that on my um uh on my anime manga instagram it's linked down below if you want to do it but i know i say this every time i mention that instagram i cannot stress this enough it is anime and manga fangirling that is all <laughs> that is literally all so wheel reads first up it picked box of light I really, really enjoyed this. I picked this up kind of on a whim. I saw it like in a few shops. And then when I was in London, it kept jumping out the shelves of me. And I was like, I'm just going to get it. And it's like, they're, they're running this convenience store at like the border between life and death is the best way to describe it. And so it, it does all tie together, but it's kind of like this one was like four little stories telling you like about different characters in it and explaining kind of the world that it's in. I loved it. I gave it a four star. I think it's a really good solid start. Um, it just needed a little bit more for me to like really fall in love with it. So I'm hoping to get volume two soon because I think I'm going to really, really enjoy that. Um, very interesting premise, beautiful artwork. Very excited to continue. Then it chose ID Invaded for me. So I picked up both volumes that I have. This has been sat on my shelf for a really, really, really long time. And um, I gave them both four stars. Again, really interesting. But I, I got a little bit lost. And I think it's because it follows on from like an anime or is like follows on from something and I wasn't aware that it follows on but I don't think it's marketed that way um so it took me a little while to wrap my head kind of around what was going on and kind of once I got there I really enjoyed the ride it's a very interesting premise basically we're following this guy and he wakes up in a car with no kind of memory of who he is um just as like this big crash is happening um but it's not really that it's um it's so strange which is probably why i like it i'm just going to read the back to you when i open my eyes i find myself in an unfamiliar car in an unfamiliar town in front of the on-ramp to an unfamiliar highway before i can process any of this i see the fiery explosions of multiple car crashes in the distance and without thinking i stomp on the accelerator and race towards the scene 
I soon find that I've driven straight into hell at full speed with no brakes, just like everyone around me. In the midst of this insanity, I discover the corpse of a girl, and suddenly I know I am the brilliant detective, and I must solve the mystery of her death. That's kind of the information that you get going in. It spirals. It's very strange. I love it. Well, I didn't love it. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. I do want to read like volume three. It's one of those things like it sat on my shelf for so long and then it was so different to what I was expecting. It kind of threw me for a minute because it was, it, it's very different to what I thought it was going in, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, I really enjoy the characters. I mean, the covers are literally stunning. Look at them beautiful um and yeah i have a lot of questions there's a lot of mysteries going on so i do recommend it for if you like uh, one that's going to make you think um it does have a lot of action but it's more to me it felt more like trying to figure it out so yeah it was a good time then i picked up volume eight of the way the house has been and i think this is the first time it's got a four rather than a five it's not the worst thing in the world it just <laughs> Uh, there wasn't enough way of the house husband in this volume for me because how much of it that's the volume that's the bonus stuff which is quite a big chunk of it and the first couple of bonuses were quite interesting because it was like as if they were in a zombie apocalypse and it was like a little one shot and that was quite fun um and then there was a little thing about the hamster that whole bit though all this at the end is like an episode of an in manga anime series so it's not like a real anime um it's like an anime that his wife is obsessed with and it was fine but it really kind of like i i didn't really want to read that and it was so long um and i just wasn't interested i would have preferred not to have that and have like another chapter of the way the house husband so it was still a very good volume. The way the house husband stuff still made me laugh a lot. The characters in it are so funny. They're all so intense about everyday things. It's hilarious. It was just because of that thing at the end. It kind of like, just put a dampener on the volume. Just took away from it. But it's still really, really good. Um, if, I've explained this before, but basically he was in the Yakuza and he retired and now he's a house husband. But he approaches everything with the same intensity that he would a mob hit. And it's hilarious absolutely hilarious highly recommend then the wheel also picked dory hidoro for me so this is one that i tried to get my hands on for a really long time finally found volume one um i gave it a four stars i really enjoy the artwork it's a similar well it's the same um mangaka as uh, was it mangaka uh, really not learning these words very well am i i'll get there it's the same guy that does day dark um so the art style is very obviously his art style it's very different to like regular manga it feels like like he's got a very distinct style and it's basically this guy who um was like cursed by a sorcerer to have a reptile head yeah a reptile head um and and a case of amnesia and he's trying to figure out who did this to him and it's like a war between sorcerers and the people in this world called the hole so they keep jumping into that city to practice their magic on the citizens and they're trying to stop them it was very interesting um i really enjoyed the premise i really enjoyed the characters and the banter i just felt like i needed a bit more so hopefully if i pick up volume two i'll start getting those five star feels but i think day dark only got four as well because it's like it's grittier it's darker which is not a bad thing for me but I, I'm not sure what it is about it that just doesn't quite have that five star feel for me. But I am very interested to continue this one. Then the wheel let me continue to of my favourite series. So we had Studio Kaizen volume 19. Volume 18 got a four stars. We are back to five stars for this. It was so good. And I generally do think that the volume 18 only got four stars because I had forgotten the premise of the arc that we were in. And then once I had been reminded of it, I was back to like absolutely loving it. And... There was a character in this, the guy on the cover, who I really enjoyed. And I'm not sure if he's going to be in it much anymore, but he was a great addition. I really enjoyed like his um, power, shall I say, his curse ability and how it was utilised. It was not just so like visually interesting to to read, but also like some stuff has happened and it gave one of the characters time to kind of reflect on things that have happened and it was just really really well done 
so continue to absolutely love this can't wait for volume 20 to come out what a series what a series and then last up for the wheel reads i've got blue exorcist volume 20 this is one of my favorite series ever i don't know if i've said this before it's about rin okamura he finds out he's the son of satan and then goes to learn to become an exorcist and shit hits the fan things go from there oh god this ep this volume okay it started off so nicely because it was like um almost like a little bit of like fluffy stuff at the beginning about christmas and yeah they were like trying to have a christmas party and then no the, the rest of it just just pain and sadness and suffering it was great <laughs> I absolutely loved it. I'm I'm just so invested in these characters. I love them all so much, and things are really like going down. I've read volume twenty one um for Run Which Run this month. Was it Run Which Run? I'm reading it this month. I've read it this month, and uh, I'm still not okay. I, I just have even more questions, and I'm really worried because I'm almost caught up. I think I've got because I've read twenty one now. So what have I got? One, two, three, four five volumes five i don't want to finish it i'm not okay i'm not okay and then super quickly i read 15 volumes for a manga reading blog which i'll leave wherever it is i'm just going to quickly run through them all and tell you the ratings uh, because i went into so much detail with them in the well i went into more detail with them in the vlog so i'm not gonna like go over it all again so i read three volumes of one punch man two three and four so good so good i think i'll just read the uh small premise here because i don't think i explained the premise very well so it says a single man arose to face the evil threatening humankind his name was saitama he became a hero for fun three years of special training made him lose all his hair but he gained invisible power he achieved such strength that he can defeat any opponent however strong with one punch unable to make use of his full strength he is unsatisfied as a hero but a cyborg named genos asked to become his pupil and that is the kind of basic premise of one punch man and it's such a good time and i gave this five five and four and i went into details of why this was only four for me um it was because some of the stuff around a character that i love uh called pro pro prisoner um who is a gay character and it's just sometimes not handled overly well like there's a few um there's a few stereotypes that we could we could stand to lose but it does happen in quite a lot of manga uh but yeah that just was let me down a little bit because it was a bit more blatant in this than it was in the show um so even though i was expecting a little bit of it it was still much but overall the series is fantastic Janos remains my favorite character then i read volume four of promise neverland so many questions so many questions and uh creep kids in a creepy orphanage that's that's all I can say. I read volume seven, eight, and nine of Full Metal Alchemist. I am really enjoying this series. I don't know why I'm picking it up so slowly. I think it's just because I've got so many other ones on the go. But uh, this was absolutely fantastic. There was there was something that happened in this though that I was like, wow, wow. And I actually said to uh, my friend who's read or watched all the anime, I was like, does this character redeem themselves because this has just happened and I'm like not okay? And they were like. They did what I do to Lisa, and they were like, well, you'll have to wait and find out. And I was like, mm -hmm. but yeah, five stars, really good. Then I read Tokyo Aliens Volume 2, uh, even though I cannot get an undamaged copy of this manga. I'm not going to focus, is it? No. Cool. It's it's torn. But it's the only, I mean, this is the third, the third copy, fourth copy that I've had, and they've all been, no, it's the fourth copy, and they've all been damaged. So I'm just... I can't do it anymore um but this is about aliens in tokyo and a kind of organization that monitors them to make sure they don't like break any rules and don't stay longer than their visa allows and things uh but stuff stuff is going on um which i can't tell you but you should definitely read it because it's really really good and it's only kind of starting to come out now like volume three isn't even out so if you wanted to get on the bandwagon the artwork again is absolutely stunning here we go this is just like a cover but we've got this kind of art going on and um to obviously straight boys 100 percent straight no gay undertones at all i then continued kg number eight so this is volume three oh, this is fast becoming one of my favorite series uh it's about a guy who something happens and he becomes like the first part human part kg hybrid um and he joins an organization which he's been trying to join for a long time um which like 
Hunt Keiju. He was working as a cleanup for think when the Keiju happened. And Keiju are like these massive monsters that kind of appear and wreak havoc. Um, and yeah, it's really, really good. I'm really falling in love with these characters. They are so much fun. Every volume kind of like has really light moments and really like sad moments. And yeah, living for it. Really enjoyed it. Love the humour, love the banter, love the kind of relationships between the characters. Just love all the characters. This is definitely one that people should start picking up because it's it's brilliant. I said I wasn't going to go into a lot of detail. And I'm not, but I could be going into less, couldn't I? Then we have Gangster Volume 1. This has been on my radar for a really long time. My friend Emma bought it for me for my birthday or Christmas last year. I can't remember. And it's kind of just been sat on my shelf waiting for me to get to it. It was amazing, amazing, like really dark and gritty. It's about like mafia. It's set in this like fictional city. And these guys are called, uh, what's called like handymen. So they kind of like help both sides. Like sometimes they do work for the mafia. Sometimes they do work for the police to kind of like try and keep things fairly sane in this city that's just full of gangs and violence. Um, so it's, it's a very me type thing, I guess. Apparently I like stuff with gangs and mafias and stuff. Who knew? My favourite character is Nick. He's a total, total badass. And he just happens to be deaf and does not let that impact him at all. They all they lose like sign language and lip reading and he doesn't talk very often, but he can talk and he does like do it in like really particular moments. Um but yeah, he's just so good because he's a total badass, like he doesn't need any help. And it's just I don't know, there's something about the way it was written, it was just so cool to see um so i can't wait to get my hands on volume two of this again if you like dark stuff i definitely recommend this um because it was brilliant we're getting there okay i then picked up solo leveling volume one so this is set in a world where there's these portals to other dimensions that these creatures come through and it kind of has rpg D, D type vibes but like computer i don't know uh, so, <laughs> so he was awakened as a hunter when these dimensional portals started to appear but everyone that's kind of awakened the power that you're awakened with that's it like this there's it's not like leveling up or anything and he is like the weakest hunter like he is known as the weakest hunter he is so weak he always gets hurt but he goes on these missions because he needs to pay for like his his mother's hospital bill yeah and his sister's tuition so he's trying desperately to kind of like provide for his family and this is all he can do um so he takes the dangerous jobs because he needs the money and then shit went down shit went down and and now well you know i mean i can't really tell you anything uh except that you should definitely read it this has been sat on my shelf for a while i think i'm like really late to the party because everyone talks about this i get it I totally get it now. Can't wait to pick up volume two and I will be buying the rest. Um, the artwork is absolutely stunning. I was so invested in this. It's so fast paced. It, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Then I read Chainsaw Man volume two. Continues to be absolutely brilliant. This is power. Love her. Um, I showed you volume one earlier. That was Denji. I am just, just enjoy this story so much. Really love the characters the kind of dynamics between them all is very interesting her <laughs> power and denji power and denji are like two loose cannons that have been told to work together and they're just chaos is brilliant um just read volume three not okay oh, not okay it was uh some stuff really went down in volume three i'm talking about volume two which was so good you got a much more like in-depth um introduction into some of the characters in the world but without giving you like too much it was just we started to get to know things a little bit more it's just so good so good weird and wonderful which is my jam i then picked up undead unluck volume two um i gave this four stars everything else apart from uh one punch man volume four was a five stars by the way including the two that are to come but this was a four stars and i generally don't think it's the manga's fault the problem is that i left it so long between reading volume one and volume two that i kind of forgot a lot of information so when i picked up volume two i was trying to remember the things that happened in volume one and just trying to link it back and i got a little bit confused but the end of this damn i don't know what's with the manga volumes i'm picking up at the minute but they all seem like intent on leaving me on a thousand cliffhangers which is really nice of them thanks <laughs> We're basically following uh, these two and she has, they have these kind of like, they're called like negators, I think. Um, and they have these powers that kind of negate things. 
is that a word? I think so. So hers is unluck, so she's really unlucky and if someone touches her, like, something really bad happens. <laughs> like, even if it's just like a brush of the shoulder and stuff, like, meteors can be caused. Uh, and his is undead, so he literally can't die. So he is desperately looking for a way to die because he's been alive a long time. And he's like, if I hang around with this unluck girl, maybe one of my deaths is going to stick. Um, so that's kind of the premise. They've been pulled into this um, organisation that kind of look for these negators, but also like do other things and they get like missions and stuff. And uh, the the thing that happened at the end, I need answers. I need answers. So I'm going to try and pick up volume three a lot quicker than I picked up volume two. Then I read Blue Exorcist volume 21. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, I forgot I read this last month. So what have I read? I've actually read volume 22. Okay, so this one, <laughs> this one was determined to literally rip my heart from my chest. You know? This <laughs> did so many things, like one after the other, that made me really emotional um, because I'm so invested in these characters and it's it's all going it's all going terribly wrong and I'm, I just don't know what to do with myself if I'm honest. I absolutely love this series, oh my god it's so good but why? Why did they have to do this to me? Kajiko, we need to talk, okay? I need to be like, woman, why would you do this to me? Why? And finally for this vlog I picked up Spy Family Volume 6, uh, another 5 stars. This was so much fun so much fun. Um, we're following this guy who's working undercover to try and get close to uh, a, a, like, I'm not sure what they call it in here, like a government guy um, from a, like, opposing nation. So he's trying to get close to them, uh, but he's very reclusive. So the best way to do it is to kind of get close to him through his family. Um, so they're trying to, like, befriend the family so that they can kind of get close to him because he's, like, really... Um, guarded and stuff and doesn't really meet anyone so this guy spy, this spy twilight needs a family so that he can infiltrate the school um and he ends up picking a girl from an orphanage who happens to be a telepath and the woman that he convinces to like play his wife is actually an assassin um but nobody knows about anyone else apart from anya the little girl because she's a telepath so she knows everything <laughs> the situations they get into hilarious and the found family aspect is so strong like there's so many cute moments in this I absolutely loved it and this volume was so fun a lot of it was taken up with a tennis tournament which was hilarious absolutely hilarious so yeah I'm still loving this series can't wait to continue it I recommend this list to a lot of people because I genuinely think this is such a good like gateway manga for people that just want to start getting into it because it doesn't take itself too seriously you kind of get used to the style it's a lot of fun it's really sweet really cute so yeah highly recommend Okay, let's do obligation reads. So let's start off with Finley Donovan is Killing It by uh, El Casamano, which I read for the podcast. So I read this with Lisa and Andy from A Zebra Reads, Lisa from Lisa Does Life. And um, it was fine. It was fine. I think I gave it like a three and a half. Yeah, I gave it a three and a half. I so wanted to love this. I so, so wanted to love it. I'll leave the podcast episode um, linked whichever side that is because we did go through it in quite a lot of detail so if you want to know like my full thoughts on it um you can kind of check that out if you want it's uh it's quite a discussion I just thought I was going to love it I thought I was going to kind of get into it and have like this amazing time and just really find it really hilarious and just absolutely fall in love with it because I'd heard so many good things about it and I just thought it was okay it was it was fine it was not as funny as I thought it was going to be um I found it all very, like, convenient. So yeah, I was just a bit like, well, it didn't, uh, it didn't blow me away as, as much as I thought it was going to. Um, it wasn't. There was nothing inherently bad about it. Um, although there was a few things that kind of uh, irritated me. It was just, it was just like everything happened so conveniently. So I wasn't like, I don't know. And I, I just felt like there was like a love interest that I thought was totally unneeded. And there was just some weird choices that I, that I didn't vibe with. So three and a half. It was, do I want to pick up book two? 
kind of kind of because the way it ended kind of made me want to read book two um but i don't know when like not not like next week or anything yeah i then read dark dawn by jay christoph but not in time for the christoph long live show so i missed it <laughs> um i gave this a four stars i kind of had my own debrief <laughs> kind of with uh chloe and lisa one night after sprints um but my kind of i just i just found there there's something in this series that if it wasn't for something that happened earlier in the series i could get fully on board with but it didn't it just doesn't sit right with me it just doesn't sit right with me and uh did i have a great time with this series absolutely do i understand why everyone like gives it five stars and raves about it 100 percent. it is really intricate it's really interesting Joe Christoph does an amazing job with the writing. My favourite thing about this book was to do with the footnotes, which I can't really say because spoilers, but it was very, very funny and very well done. I just, I think it was just really that one thing that I was just like, oh, it just doesn't sit right with me. But it was still a very good book. Four stars is still a very good rating. Just couldn't give it five stars because of that, really. I, I don't need to tell you what this is about, do I? No, good. Then for Schwabalong, I actually read two books this month because... I was actually ahead. I'm ahead. What? Look at me. So first up, I read Our Dark Duet. So many tabs. I'll leave the live show, whichever side it is. Um, this is the one that we did at the beginning of April. So it was March's book, but I read at the beginning of April, just before the live show. Um, I forgot how good this duology is. I, I seriously forgot how good this duology is. And this one makes me so emotional because looking back at the characters in the first book and then seeing how they are in the second book and kind of seeing how much has changed and why it's changed and then going through all the events of the second book i didn't cry but it was a close thing okay <laughs> close thing so monsters of verity is kind of set in this world where like monsters have come out of um acts of violence um depending on the severity of the violence like depends on which monster is released and um this city is kind of like overrun with them it's divided into two on one side you've got this kind of like mafia guy in charge who um controls through like fear and on the other side you've got this guy who never really intended to be a leader just kind of happened and he's doing his best but he has these monsters in his employ who are very different to the other monsters and the mafia guy has like the really scary monsters in his employ and it's kind of like humans and monsters different types and it's so good and that's all i really want to say but i do think sometimes this series gets overlooked this geology gets overlooked and it was just i forgot how good it was like it had been a long time since i read it the first time through and i was just oh, blown away so good so good and then because i am ahead of myself i've already read gallant with the live show is happening at some point <laughs> at some point it's it's the what is it the sixth day i think it's happening like wednesday um so it won't have happened yet but maybe i'll come back and link the live show so it might be linked probably won't be because i have a brain like sieve so this was another reread for me most of well all of schwab's books now are rereads for me um but i had such a good time with this i think this one like gets a bad rap because at the time a lot of people were like i don't really know what like age range is supposed to be and and it's not the same as like addy and all this kind of stuff yeah i know that's kind of the beauty of it it's this fantastic story about life and death and family and what it means to be family and i i don't really know how best to describe this book all i can tell you is twice i've read it twice i've loved it and I can't wait to talk about it more on the live show because I have so much to say about it, but um, it's probably better to do it in a spoilery context, not in a wrap up. So um, look out for the live show. It's happening. Uh, hopefully if I get this up, it's happening tomorrow. If I don't, it's already happened and it's linked up there. So either way, come and see what we have to say about it. And finally, because I feel like I've been talking for like 10,000 years, my, my voice hurts, my throat is sore. It's been a while since I've done like a proper sit down video. Look at me go. Um, I'm going to give you a rundown of how my magical readathon went because it went good. It went good. So I need to look at my laptop so I can tell you what the hell I'm talking about. Good. So first up for elemental studies, botanic controls, I need to read a book with flowers on the cover. I read Gallant. Look at all those flowers. 
already know my thoughts on this five stars then for shape-shifting course focus form wolf i needed to read a book with a wolf on the cover title or in the author's name and i was going to read brother song but we didn't we didn't get around to it this month and um so i decided i was going to read volume four of creative which technically doesn't have a um wolf on the cover but is about werewolves and so then i was like well i mean he's he's the werewolf and he's on well these two are werewolves and they're on the back cover so i mean that kind of counts and then i just decided to um reread volumes one two and three um so i read all four volumes and um if i use volume one i mean that is he's the werewolf so i'm gonna count that uh all five stars brilliant so i haven't explained this one before it's a br manga about uh, a guy who's a werewolf and he falls in love with uh this guy who is not a werewolf and uh, that's all i'm gonna say because i don't want to give anything else away then we had spells and incantations which was spell magic missile and it was to read a book with a target length of 389 to 415 pages i would take your avengers i think it's like 400 and something what was it yeah it like just scraped it in it's like 410 no even closer 414 wow 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 that was really close but it worked good then we had conjuration spirit binding spells and the prompt was to read a book recommended by a friend i kind of cheated i used attack on titan because attack on titan in general was recommended by my friend emma and she's purely fully to blame she's fully to blame for this obsession that we're in then we had demonology type impersonators and the prompt was to read a book compared to one of your favorites and i used chainsaw man because it was in a list of manga like attack on titan and Tokyo Ghoul is in that list as well and I love both of those and as you know I also love this so good good for me and then lastly for lore we had The Legend of Dia to read a book with a map I chose no regrets and I have no regrets over this choice even though technically the entire map is <laughs> this <laughs> is this really detailed drawing of the three walls I used that and as we know I loved this so I have no regrets but um dum so I completed all of my prompts all of my exams ready for the next round in autumn yeah autumn and I absolutely love this readathon I love the work that she puts into it it was so much fun and uh I know that the prompts are fairly specific but sometimes you just gotta just gotta like bend them till they work so my dumbass generally thought I could make a stack to show you, but bearing in mind that this is on the starts at the floor, I'm sat cross-legged, but still, um, I can't lift this. And I mean, technically this also needs to go on. So I can't lift this. So here is, so here's like one part of it. And there's the other part um, with something's going the children because it's I, it's too big to go on the top but it's too like you know <sighs> moving on <laughs> so it was a very good reading month i had a great time so much manga it was just living my best life in the comments below let me know any thoughts that you have on anything that i read in april or you can let me know your favorite book of april or if you just want me to know you're here that purple heart is always appreciated thank you guys so so much for watching if you're not already subscribed and you'd like to see more bookish content from me remember to hit that button leave a like if you want to and i'll see you in the next one Bye. I'm stretching it a little bit differently this month because I read Demon Be Gone. <laughs> Next, I had a graphic. Wow. Then we had another manga. No, we didn't. <laughs> so it's five stars across the ball for one bitch run. Across the ball. Instagram. Ah, I just put it myself. <laughs> wow. Wow. Oh, it really hurt. And finally for this vlog, I picked up Spy Valley Emily to do with the footnotes in this volume, which I, this volume, this is obviously, <laughs> this is obviously, uh, 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 good, good, about like family and death and, wow, that sounds really, that's a terrible, terrible, wow.